So let's talk habitat. Habitat is crucial for insects. And look, if you're going to go in collecting, you kind of have to know what good habitat is. Insects are very predictable in most cases, though. Uh, your daytime insects are going to be looking at flower heads. Your daytime insects are going to be looking for flyways, areas that are open and exposed to the sun, open and exposed for a variety of plants and plant foods. Those are the places that you're going to find the insects moving. But they also travel. Insects tend to travel a lot and they cover a lot of ground. So when we talk about flyways, we could be talking about streams, large creeks, even rivers. The Susquehanna River, the Potomac River, the Mississippi River are all known and notorious, reputable flyways for good insects. And a lot of those are the insects that are moving up into the northern U.S. So we know those are good places. Along those areas, along those streams and creeks, you're going to get a nice variety of, of habitat and food plant that are going to attract and give those insects something to eat. Open fields and meadows. I'm a sucker for open meadows. If I'm hiking a path and I see an open meadow, I'm going to stop every single time. Okay, so habitat is going to switch up. Everywhere you go, it's going to be a little bit different. In some cases, a lot of bit different. Look at the eastern U.S. versus western U.S. The habitat changes, the environment changes right along with the insects. And it helps to know a little bit about the life history of these things. What are they going to eat? What are they going to feed on? Those are the things you want to key on because that will increase your chance to find those particular species. Take monarch butterflies, for instance. Milkweed is key. The coolest thing about milkweed is it also attracts a ton of other cool insects. So if you're only looking for monarchs and you're keying on a milkweed habitat, you also stand a really good chance of finding a lot of other insects at the same time. That is how it works. Learn a little bit about these things before you get in, find out where you're going, get your permissions, and you should have no problems locating the species you're looking for. So also think about how the terrain changes, how the geography changes. That is also going to dictate where insects can be found. Hilltops, mountaintops, Look, lots of insects get blown by the wind to get moved by storms up to the top of the mountains. And that's a big deal. You can go to those places and you can find a lot of neat insects. You can find meadows. Some of those meadows are going to be secluded, whether they're hidden in the bottomlands in the east or whether they're hidden up in the top of a mountain in the west. Those are also going to be great places. Look for funnels. Insects are going to get funneled by the terrain and by geography. And because of that, they're very predictable in that way too. So you can set up and you can go in and you can search those areas out and you can find insects there as well. Again, technology can play into this as well. Some of your phone apps, your Onyx map, for instance, will put you into those types of places. It will show you the topography. It will show you where the changes are and you can find things a lot easier and access those points a lot easier. And you don't always have to travel so far to do it. Sometimes you can see where the roadways are that you can drive closer. You can get in a little closer and do a little less hiking than what you thought you were going to have to do. The old school technology of road maps, especially those maps that offer the topographic lines. Look, I used to use topo maps all the time and we would find great overlooks and really cool places to find insects and find those funnels, especially find the streams, the hidden pools, the little hidden lakes and ponds that are around. Those are also great places to find insects. So you have to use the technology you have available. Old school, new school, doesn't matter. Use what you got and try to get yourself into the position to find the most insects that you can. Now in the East, we deal with a lot of clear cut. We deal with a lot of lumbering and timbering out in areas. We don't see the forest fires and the large you know, landscape fires that they have out west, but we still use those areas similar to the same, whereas when you cut out those larger mature trees, that allows that new undergrowth, that allows a lot of that young growth to come in. That also gets a lot more sunlight to the ground, and that's going to permit a lot of flowers and a lots of neat things to grow that are going to attract insects. Your burned areas out west are very much the same. Everything gets burned off and it regrows. And when that new growth comes in, that's going to promote good habitat 
for lots of great insects. So check those areas. Just because it's an old burn doesn't mean everything's dead. Usually that means there's more life there now than there was before. One of the easiest accesses that I can find into good bugs is right along roadways. All right, roadside collecting is a very, very common way of doing it. Nowadays, it can be a very dangerous way of collecting. So please be careful. Look where you're going, watch where you park. But you know what? You can bet that there's going to be lots of nice habitat along those open roadways. Again, those are going to be flyways. Insects are going to use those roadways as flyways lit up by the sun. A lot of the larger vegetation is cleaned out of there, and that promotes the new growth that insects like so much. So use the roadways. Find those trails. Look, if you can find some old logging roads, they're going to take you up the side of a mountain and put you into some meadows. That is always a good place to go. Just be careful. Watch what you're doing and don't get yourself into trouble. Hey, look, now it is an impulsive way to collect is to cruise roads and paths and look for insects both on those roads as well as along those roads. But I want to point something out really important. I want to point out the fact that there are private property attached to those access points. You want to knock on doors. You want to, you know, you want to talk to people before you access properties and try to get in there and collect insects and bugs. So when you're in some of that habitat, now you got to get a little more specific because there's not always going to be flowers. There's not always going to be obvious things to look at. Hey man, look, I also like to go and flip logs and flip rocks and peel bark. If you can find some old downfalls that have been laying for a while and they got that really nice loose bark hanging onto them, peel that away nice and slow and see what's under there. Insects are going to hide. They don't want to be out there where everybody can see them. They're hiding from the predators. So peel that bark away. Look what's under there. You're not always ruining habitat for insects by peeling bark. Don't be afraid to do it. Sometimes that's the only place you're going to find certain insects and certain bugs. You just have to go look. If you don't look, then you don't know what's there. I prefer to peel the bark and find out. All right, guys, so check it out. I have a bunch of ants that I found underneath the, the bark here on this tree. And what I found was we got some larvae and some pupa mixed in. A lot of people don't realize how tasty this stuff is. And I'm not doing this to gross you out because I realize most people have a really hard time contemplating eating insects or even really understanding why somebody would. The first thing you need to understand is, first of all, they're not going to hurt you. Insects are 100% protein. The second thing you need to realize is insects are tasty. And especially when it comes to ant pupa and ant larva, they are extremely tasty. Hmm. It's not exactly a trail side snack, but it's the next best thing to one. Again, 100% protein and they taste pretty good. It's just insects and there's plenty of them out there. And most of them are pretty good.